The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you between the ages of 35 and 45? Then here's a question you've probably asked yourself more than once. Will I be alive in 1975? Let's see now. In 1975, there will be 20 million people in the United States who have passed their 65th birthday. That's twice as many as we have today. And those 20 million will be drawn from people who are between 35 and 45 today. So the chances are very good that you will be alive in 75. And in exactly 14 minutes, we'll have a suggestion which will show you how life insurance with the Equitable Life Assurance Society can help you make the most of this long life that's ahead of you. Tonight's FBI file, The Divorced Child. The number one problem facing every law enforcement agency in the United States, including your FBI, is juvenile delinquency. That is a sobering fact. For from the younger generation must come the men and women who will run the nation in a few years. For that reason, it's up to everyone to do his or her share in fighting the problem. For we dare not leave the heritage of a morally corrupt generation to the world of tomorrow. It is a sad but undeniable true fact that the basic reason for the prevalence of juvenile delinquency today is the laxness of some parents. Parents who believe that it's possible to allow their told children just to grow up by themselves. Nothing could be further from the truth. Tonight's FBI file opens in a residential suburb of a large Midwestern city. In a comfortable home on a quiet, tree-shaded street, Midge Morgan, age 16, is sitting in her room. Her mother enters. Midge? Oh, hi, Mom. I thought you were going to the bridge club. Well, I... I am. Late, aren't you? Uh, that doesn't matter. Um... Uh, Midge? Yeah? Uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, look, Mom, it is the way I left the bathroom this morning. Uh, I no, could... dear, this is really serious. Oh? Uh, it's about your father and me. Well? Uh, well, uh, this trip he's taken, he... He didn't go away because of business. What do you mean? Uh, we're getting a divorce. Mom! Oh, I know this is a shock to you, oh, darling. Oh, Mom, you're kidding. No, I'm sorry to say I'm not. Oh! No, now, dear. Oh, you can't do it, Mommy. Don't you see? You just can't. Now, Midge, dear, it won't be too bad. Your father and I have arranged everything in a very friendly fashion. Oh, no! We, uh, we <laughs> knew you had to be considered, too. So we agreed <laughs> that we would share you. What does that mean? Why, you'll live with him six months of the year and me six months. I want to live with both of you together. <laughs> but, darling, that's impossible. Why? Because... Because your father and I are finished. Oh, Mommy, isn't there anything I could do? No, dear. If you had a quarrel or something, I could patch it up. Honest, I could. Oh, it's beyond that, darling. Oh, please, Mom. <laughs> now, please, dear, don't carry on like that. You're only upsetting me. <laughs> uh, Midge, look. Maybe after a while you'll have a new daddy. What? Yes, someone who'll take care of us both a lot better than your father has. You mean you already have someone else in mind? Mommy, have you? Well, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> now, he's a very nice man, dear. I'm I don't sure want to you hear anymore. Midge, where are you going? I'm getting out of here. Midge, Midge! <laughs> Perfect. 
Oh, I can sing for you, Tappy. Oh, drop dead, will you? Hi there, Midge. Oh, hello, Tappy. You got a private booth here? No, no, um, sit down. Okay. Uh, would you like some of my Coke? No, thanks. I just had two frosted. Hey, is something the matter with you? Why? I've been watching you for the last ten minutes. You look really down, girl. I am. Well, now, just put your head on Aunt Taffy's shoulder and tell all. What is it, sugar? Oh, Taffy, I'm just miserable. Man trouble? Oh, no, it, it's my mother and father. <laughs> what about them? They're getting a divorce. <laughs> is that all that's bothering you? <laughs> Taffy, it's horrible. Oh, Midge, you're so provincial. Huh? It happens to everybody. Oh, no, Taffy. Honey, my father and mother have been divorced for over two years. They have? Sure. When it first happened, I felt just like you do. Really? Yeah. And then one day, I figured out something. I figured if they could divorce each other, I had a perfect right to divorce them. And that solved everything. What do you mean? Well, from then on, I've lived my own life, and nobody's bothered me. But what about your mother? Oh, she's so busy going out all the time, she doesn't know what I'm doing. Gee. Mitch, believe me, you should do the same thing. How? Look, what are you doing tonight? I... I don't know. I'm not going home. That's one sure thing. Perfect. Let me get you a date. Who with? Oh, none of these squares around here. I know some older fellas. Very sophisticated types. Would you like to meet them? Sure. Why not? Well... Oh, but I'm not dressed for a date. Oh, you can wear something of mine. Finish your coat and we'll go over to my house and call them up. But they're in the club here someplace. Gee, what a mob. Oh, oh, there they are. Frankie! Hey, Frankie! Shall we go over there? Are you kidding? Make them come to us. We sees you. Uh-huh. And he's coming, too. Which is my date, the tallest one. He's cute. Uh, hi, Annie. Hi, here, Frankie. Hello, Taff. Oh, hi, Andy. I want you both to meet a girlfriend of mine, Midge Morgan. This is Frank Shelton hi. and Andy Briscoe. How do you do? I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Well, I suppose we sit down and go against a couple of beers. You got a table? Yeah, right there. Oh, look, well, we're going to powder our noses. We'll be right back. Okay. Come on. Oh, will you excuse us, please? Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Oh, order us a couple of beers anyway. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, Andy, what do you think? My date? Yeah. Not bad. Uh, looks a little square, though. Look, if she's a friend of Taffy, she's okay. What do we do with him? Well, we'll stay here a while and make the rounds. We ain't got no car. Don't worry, we will have in fact, I can take care of that right now. What do you mean? Stale one. Oh. What about the dames? He stay here and feed him some beer. And I'll pick up a heap and be back in an hour. In the nearby city at police headquarters, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated with an old friend, Detective Sergeant Bill Collins. This is a kind of a dirty trick to play on you, Jim. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you're supposed to be having a night off, so you wind up sitting around here listening to my trouble. I'm glad to do it, Bill. You know that. Now, let's have your story, huh? Well, as you know, my sole assignment for the past few months has been juvenile delinquency. Yes. It's a full-time job, believe me. I'm sure it is. One element I've come across has an FBI angle. Oh, what is it, though? Stolen cars. Hmm? Two of them were picked up here in the city this morning. They'd been stolen in the suburbs, and... Taken across the state line. Stolen by youngsters? Well, it appears that way. Were they apprehended? No, but I'm sure kids did the job. Huh? Why? Well, for one thing, they weren't stolen for profit. They'd been used overnight and then abandoned. Oh, I see. And in both cars, the upholstery had been slashed, clocks broken, acts of pure vandalism, typical of misguided kids. Mm hmm Oh, uh, did the local police where the cars were stolen have any leads on the car thieves? No. Nope. Bill, have you had your dinner yet? No, I haven't. Neither have I, so... Let's go get something to eat, huh? We can talk this thing over and figure out how to proceed. Midge? Yes, Andy? How about another beer? Well, yes. <laughs> Swell. How about you, Tap? Huh? How about another beer? I want something stronger than beer. What's more, I want another date. Look, Frankie will be here. You've been saying that for the last hour. Oh, Taffy, you're 
you're being a bad sport. Pop, we're supposed to be having fun. That's what you told me. <laughs> Remember? Some fun. <laughs> Sitting here and watching hey, there you he is get... now. Well, it's about time. Hi, kids. Hi, Hi. Frankie. Where have you been? You've got some nerve. Relax, sweetheart. I've been out getting us some transportation. Want a beer, Frankie? No, not here. Let's go someplace where there's real action. Oh, wonderful. I've got a good mind to go home. Look, Taffy, I don't want no trouble with you. You understand? Ah. Uh, Andy, you paid up here? Yeah. All right, then let's go. Come on, Taffy. Oh, okay. Where are we going? Uh, we'll hit the river club first. Oh, Taffy, I'm having such a wonderful time. No more worry. Oh, I should say not. Go ahead. Okay. Where's the car? Right over there. That big convertible? Yep. Oh, nice going. What are we riding in? This little job right here. Frankie, gee, that's snazzy. Where did you get that? Stole it. <laughs> oh, he's a comedian. <laughs> All right. Pile in, gals. Hello? Hello, Jim. This is Bill Collins. Oh, hello, Bill. I'm sorry to bother you at home, Jim, but I just came back here to headquarters. I found a report I thought I should pass on to you. Oh, what is it? It came from out in Blackton. A car was stolen out there about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. Go on. It belonged to a Dr. Brown. Uh, he stopped at a patient's house, and while he was inside, his car was taken. I see. He saw the thief from a window. He described him as being about 18 years old. Bill, was the thief alone? Yes. The doctor attempted to follow him in his patient's car, but he lost him right after he crossed the state line. Oh. Was he heading in here to town? Well, it appeared that way, yes. Bill, has an alarm been sent out? Yes, we've alerted all local police, given them a complete description of the car. You say you're at headquarters, huh? Yeah, that's right. I'll be right over. Open the door, Richard. Open the door and let me in. <laughs> Open the door, Richard. Richard, why don't you open the door? <laughs> oh, Richard, That's so funny. Everything's <laughs> so funny. Hey, Frankie, where are we going? Around the corner. <laughs> I love going around corners. <laughs> now where are we going? Where do you want to go? Well, I don't want to go home. Well, it's 4 a.m., kid. Everything's closed. Hey, I know a place that's never closed. Where? New York. Oh, silly. What do you mean, silly? What's wrong with New York? <laughs> it's a thousand miles away. What's wrong with that? He's right. Let's go to New York. Hey, do you mean that, Tess? Sure. Let's go right now. Okay. Hey, wait a minute, Frankie. Huh? Important detail department. Uh, money. We'll get money. Whee! We're going to New York! Oh, honest, Taffy, are we really going? Sure! Oh, wonderful! What are you slowing down for? Pulling into this gas station. Oh, you know, that is very smart of him, Taffy. Huh? If we're going to New York, we have to have gas. <laughs> <laughs> is it open, Frankie? Yeah, this is an all-night place. Come out, come out, wherever you are! <laughs> There's the guy. What can I do for you? Uh, first, I want you to check the right front tire. Okay. Well, looks okay to me. Oh, oh. Frankie! Shut up. Search him first, Frankie. He may have a stow on him. That's what I'm doing. What is this? What's happening? Shut up. But he hit him on the head. We gotta get to New York, don't we? Mitch, let the boys do it their way. But I don't like this. I'm getting out. Uh, here's Mitch, a real please, good roll, yes. too. Oh. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm getting out. Get back in there. But I don't want to... Get back, I said. <gasps> now, let's get out of here. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI helps provide security for your country. Now, let's talk briefly about another kind of security. Security for those who want to be independent as they grow older. Well, that's easier said than done, Mr. Cross. Frankly, I haven't saved a cent since prices and taxes started going up, so when you talk about independence 20 or 30 years from now, you're just not talking my language. Ah, uh, but I am. Right now, in the equitable society, are thousands of men who once had your viewpoint. But now, they're looking forward to complete independence in their 60s through an Equitable Life Assurance Society Independent 60s plan. Independent 60s, you say? All right. How does this plan work? The Independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society has these three features. First, it costs considerably less than you probably think. 
especially if you're covered by Social Security. Second, you can create your retirement estate for the full amount the moment you sign the contract. You don't spend years wondering whether or not you're going to accumulate enough money to be independent in your 60s. You're sure of it because it's guaranteed by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Third, this equitable plan gives you a definite goal and provides you with a practical method for reaching that goal. Yes, there's nothing finer than being independent in your 60s, being your own boss, able to do the things you want to do. Boy, I'd sure like to hear more about this. Well, then I suggest you get in touch with an Equitable Life Assurance Society representative. He'll give you the facts on the Independent 60s plan and let you make up your own mind. Look in the phone book for the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Divorced Child. In a statement to the listeners of this program a few weeks ago, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, said that one prevalent reason for delinquent children is delinquent parents. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI is ample proof of that fact. Do you know the friends of your children? Do you know where your children are going when they leave the house? Do you know how your children are getting along at school? Those are questions that you who are parents should be asking yourselves. For the danger is not in the child who is occupied in healthy endeavor, but the future juvenile delinquent is the child who has too much unsupervised time on his hands. There are various agencies like schools and local youth organizations which can help you guide your child, but they can only do just so much. They cannot do a complete job because there is no substitute for parents. Tonight's file continues at the gas station. An hour has passed since the holdup. The attendant has regained consciousness and is being interviewed by Detective Sergeant Collins and Special Agent Jim Taylor. You say that the car was a gray convertible. Yes, that's right. Were you able to get the license number? No, everything happened so quickly. By the time they pulled away, I was unconscious. I'm certain it's the doctor's car, Jim. Yes, Sergeant, it must be. Can you describe the young man who assaulted you? Well, I'd say he was around 18 or 19 years old. Yeah? He had dark hair, was about my size, and wore a sport coat. Can you think of anything else about him? Uh, no. Who else was in the car? Two girls and another fellow. Could you describe them? Uh, no, sir. I'm afraid I couldn't. Oh, excuse me, please. Oh, certainly. Go ahead. Bill, where's that girl's scarf? I have it right here. The attendant oh. says he found it by the gas pump. Huh? That's right. It could have belonged to one of the girls in that car. Oh, yeah. Yes, he's right here. Sergeant Collins. Yeah? This call is for you. No, thank you. Well, how's your head feel? Yeah. Well, not too bad. Have you had a doctor look at it yet? Yes, an ambulance is here. I'm going to drop by at the hospital for an x-ray later. Oh, good. Uh, now, this scarf that you found, do you think it was dropped by someone in that car? Yes, I'm sure it was. I just cleaned up around here ten minutes before they came. Uh -huh. Right, Tom. How much money did they get from me? Over $300. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Bill? Uh, that was headquarters. The stolen car was just found abandoned out on Route 30. No trace of the occupants? Not yet. They're going over the car now for fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Uh... Bill, what time do the laundries open in this town? About 8 o'clock, I believe. Why? Well, there's a laundry mark on this girl's scarf. We could do a quick check with the laundries, and we should be able to learn the identity of the owner. Oh. oh. Good morning. Huh? I said good morning, Midge. Oh. Oh. Taffy. That's right. Oh, Taffy, my head. It hurts so. Oh, I feel awful. That figures. Why? Honey child, you have what is known as a hangover. Hangover? Darling, you weren't drinking milk. Oh, where are we? In a tourist cabin. What? Well, how did we get here? We came here last night, remember? Last night? Yes. Oh. Oh. No, I do remember. The gas station, that man, that man, the boys robbed. Quiet! Oh, that was terrible, Taffy. Will you shut up? 
Where are they? Andy and Frank? Yes. They dropped us off here, then they went out to dump the car. Oh, thank heavens. What do you mean? We're rid of them. Rid of them? They're coming back here for us. They're what? Look, we're all going to New York, remember? Oh, no, Taffy. The boys are picking up another car. And you want to go with them? Sure, why not? Well, I don't. Taffy, I want to go home. To your mother? Yes. I thought you couldn't put up with her getting divorced. Anything is better than this. I'm not going with you. Look, honey, you haven't got much choice. What do you mean? We were all in that stick-up last night. But I didn't want any part of it. I even tried to get out of the car, don't you remember? Oh, that makes no difference. You're in just as much trouble as the boys are. Oh, this is awful. Oh, look, Midge. Everything's awful because you've got a hangover. There's a lunch wagon across the highway. We'll go over there and get some breakfast. I'll guarantee you that after you've eaten something, you'll feel altogether different. <laughs> Just a minute. Yes? Mrs. Morgan? That's right. My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? Yes, that's right. Here are my credentials. Uh, I see. May I come in, please? Well, yes, of course. Mrs. Morgan, I've come here to talk to you about your daughter. You know where Midge is. You found her. She isn't here? No, she didn't come home all night. Just ten minutes ago, she called and she oh. was crying. She said she was in trouble and she was going well, to New York. But before I could uh, question her any further, she hung she, up. Did she say where she was? No. Why are you here? Well, I'm sorry to say I have reason to believe that your daughter was involved in a gas station holdup. Oh. At about four o'clock this morning. Well, that can't be. Do you recognize this scarf? Yes, it belongs to Midge. It was found at the scene of the holdup. One of the girls in the car dropped it. But Midge couldn't be involved in anything like that. You just said that she hadn't been home all night. Yes, but this is the first time it ever happened. Midge is a good girl. She never stays out. She wouldn't have last night if... Uh, well, if... Well? Well, yesterday afternoon, I... I had to tell Midge that her father and I were getting a divorce. It, it was a terrible shock to her, and she ran out of the house. And that's the last time I saw her. Mm, oh, dear. If she's fallen in with bad company and gotten into trouble, then it could even be my fault. Yes. I'm quite sure that it could, Mrs. Morgan. Well, what can be done? How can I find her? Now, you say she called approximately ten minutes ago? Yes. Have you received any calls since then? No. Well, it's possible that the phone company will cooperate with us in helping to trace that call. Oh, I hope so. I'll get to work on it at once. <laughs> Colin speaking. Hello, Bill. Jim Taylor. Yes, Jim. I just interviewed the Morgan girl's mother. Yeah? She called home about ten minutes before I got there. I traced the call. It came from a diner out on Route 28. I see. I'll give you the location. Meet me out there. Any luck, Jim? I just talked to the manager of the diner. Did he have any information? No, he just went on duty. His night man went home about an hour ago. And uh, he's the man to see? That's right. Did you get his address? Yes, I have it right here. Let's go. Well, I talked to the counterman. What's the story? I described the Morgan girl to him. He remembers her all right. She came in with another girl. Now, what about the two young men? No sign of them. Did uh, he notice if they drove up? No, he said they came on foot. And I have a hunch that that tells us where to find them. Frankie, you gonna leave the car right here? Sure, we'll be pulling right out. Let's go in and get the gals. Okay. I hope they aren't disappointed about this heap. Why should they be? Well, it ain't got the class the other one had. It'll get us to New York just as good. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> Hi, kid. Oh. <laughs> Hiya, Frankie. Andy. Hi. What's the matter with her? Ah, uh, she's just got a hangover. That isn't it at all, Taffy. Oh, uh, what is it? I don't want to go to New York. What's got into you? I want to go home. Now, don't go starting that again. I already told you why you couldn't. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, come on, Mitch. I'm not going. Now, look, we ain't leaving you here. I'm not going, I said. Oh, uh, what'll we do, Frankie? She's coming if we have to drag her out. Now, get up. No. Get up. Let go of me. Stop your yelling. Hey, Frankie, none of that. You keep part of this. Well, stop pushing her around. Look, I'll give it to both of you. Lay off of that, son. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? Huh? I'll handle them, Jim. Good. Come on, you. 
Come on, you too, young lady. Oh, thank heaven you're here. Are you the Morgan girl? Yes, how did you find us? Well, I traced your call to the diner across the highway. When I heard you'd come in there on foot, I knew you were somewhere in this neighborhood. Then I remembered this tourist camp. Oh. All right, Miss Morgan. Let's get out of here. Frankie Shelton and Andy Bristol were sent to a reformatory. They will remain there until they are 21 years old. Their companion, Taffy, was placed on probation for five years. Midge Morgan had no charges placed against her. And thus, your FBI and the local police help straighten out another delinquency problem. If your child is headed for trouble, he might be as fortunate as Midge Morgan, and he might escape with only official censure. But that would be a foolhardy gamble to take, for not many juvenile delinquents are that fortunate. Your FBI sincerely trusts that you will not depend on the chance that your child will be rescued from trouble before that trouble develops and will be given a second chance. Be a good parent and help your child grow up so he'll never need a second chance. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. A little while ago, I gave you a few brief facts about the independent 60s plan of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. To get full information, you'll want to ask your Equitable Society representative questions like these. Exactly how much will the plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How will it dovetail with my Social Security? He's got the answer to that, too. What income will it give me in my 60s? Your Equitable Society representative will give you the exact figure. Ask him to drop around for a friendly visit. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care to this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Fugitive Pirate. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI. It's a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Pirate, on this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.